everybody, my name is Sarah Jo. This week, I'm co-hosting music lessons with Carlos. See you! Welcome, everybody, to another live session in Music Lesson Webinar with Carlos. Today, we will cover different topics, such as ear training, music theory, keyboard skills, chord progressions, and contemporary voicings. We also have some new piano tutorials, so stay tuned, and let's get started. Okay, Sarah Jo, thank you. Thank you for um, this video. Yeah, it's a transcription of uh, the song title He Won't Hold You featuring Rhapsody by Jacob Collier. It's from the album, uh, I hope I can pronounce it well, DJ Ease Volume 3. Yeah, so this album, DJ Ease Volume 3, is the third record in the DJE series of Jacob Collier and it was released in August 14th of 2020 and in the 20, 21st Grammy Awards the album was nominated album of the year yeah so right there we can see it's an interesting photo uh, Jacob Collier splitting himself and like a genie in different parts yeah <clears throat> but what I'm very interested is in the in this music video in the music video, actually, it, ca it captured my attention, yeah, and I realized, oh, wow, you know, um, this video actually features the work and animation of Daniel Bruson, yeah, uh, and uh, Daniel, Daniel Bruson, yeah, and the cool thing is that uh, he used a certain animation technique that combines both digital and paper animation, and he did, did close to 
or maybe around 1,200 drawings. Can you believe over 1,200 drawings? Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah, that's, that's actually quite amazing, yeah, the, to be able to do this. Okay. So, um, and, you know, I read that Jacob Collier, he saw some of Daniel Bruson's work online, and then he reached out to him. And then they started this collaboration for this video. Okay, great. So now it's time to do our own work. Our own work. And I would like to start with a, a <clears throat> single notes. Yeah, we're going to warm up. We're going to warm up with single notes. Let me see if I'm okay. Maybe. Okay, I'm going to turn up the volume up a notch. Okay, I think I'm all set. I'm all set. Okay. We're going to start with single notes. So this is just a warm-up. Take us uh, two minutes. I'm going to play triad. And then I'm going to ask you to sing all the different diatonic notes. And I'm going to be changing keys, changing keys all the time. So why don't we start? We're going to start in A flat. We're going to sing Do. Do. Then I'm going to play. Yeah. We're going to go to the next one. Key of B. Key of B, you're going to sing Sol. Sol. And moving on, let's go to the key of A. Key of A, we're going to sing Re. Re and moving, let's go to D flat. Key of D flat, we're gonna sing La. La and let's go to F. Key of F, we're gonna sing Mi. Mi and moving to B flat. In B flat, we're going to sing T. T. And let's end the key of C. We're going to sing Fa. Fa. Okay, that's a nice uh, warm up. Okay, let me let me do one more thing. Okay, Hiram, welcome, welcome. Yeah, welcome to our class. And um, I want to continue. Yeah, last week we started with our, our diatonic fifths. Diatonic fifths ascending. So now we're going to go descending. We're going to sing diatonic fifth descending. So same process. Yeah, I'm going to play. Let me see. Maybe I can even zoom in a bit more. Yeah. Yes, I'm going to play a triad to establish a key, and then we're going to sing those patterns. Do, Fa, Do, Fa, next one, Re, Sol, but we're going to change keys. Mi, La, next one, Fa, T, next one, Sol, Do, Next interval, La, Re, and next interval, T, Mi, okay, and what I would like to do with a diatonic fifth, because they are a bit, uh, you know, a larger um, interval to sing, yeah, we're going to sing first the first note, the second note, and then both together, yeah, and we're going to apply the same technique for fifth, sixth, and seventh. So let's start. Let's let's start in a different key. A flat. We're gonna sing Do Fa descending. Do then Fa together. Do Fa and we're gonna move on. Key of B. We're gonna sing Re Sol descending. Re. 
sol together re sol and moving on let's go to the key of f we're gonna sing mi la mi la together mi la and let's go to another key let's go to the key of b key of b we're gonna sing fa ti fa and then ti ti and together fa ti and moving on let's go to e flat key of e flat when i sing sol do sol and then do do together sol do and let's go to the key of a key of a we're gonna sing la re la re re together la re and let's go to the key of d key of d we're gonna sing t me descending t or up and active t and then me me together t me okay that's a nice a warm up with diatonic fifths descending. Part of the technique, we are changing keys all the time. You know, changing keys, changing keys. Yeah, so that kind of activates our long term uh, musical memory. Okay, good. So we did intervals. Now let's go to the scale of the day. And scales. <clears throat> we were working with Lydian flat cell. Do, re, mi, fi. Sol, La, Te, Do, Root, 9, 3, Sharp, 11, 5, 13, Flat, 7, Root. We're going to sing, we're going to sing this uh, scale, and then we're going to sing the same scale. Okay, let's, let's start in the key of C. Okay, so that you can uh, uh, <laughs> decode the diagram title. Interval in between notes, whole step, whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, half step, whole step. Then we have the most important part, which is the solfege uh, code. Do, re, mi, fi, sol, la, te, do. And then we have the actual uh, le letter name. C, D, E, F, G, A, B, flat, C. And we're going to do this in different keys. Okay, so now I want to do a different key now. Let's go to E flat. Okay, let's start in E flat. And... Good, Hiram, you were practicing, yeah? So you are ahead of the game now. Yeah, excellent. Okay. Uh, and um, we're gonna start, we're gonna start. And let's sing ascending. Do, re, mi, fi, sol, la, te, do. And we have our Lydian flat seven scale. What is next? We're gonna sing a diatonic, diatonic thirds ascending and descending. Why don't we start? So it's going to be like Do, Mi, Re, Fi, Mi, Sol, and so on. So we're going to sing. Um, okay, let's uh, let's uh, sing and sing and play. Here we go. Do, Mi, Re, Fi, Mi, Sol, Fi, La, Sol. Descending. Do, mi, te, re, la, do, sol, te, fi, la, mi, sol, re, fi, do, mi, do. Okay, and now we're gonna move to another key. Okay, so this is this is what we do. We uh, do our cluster, we can uh, build our scale ascending or descending, and then we're going to sing our diatonic patterns, and we can sing them as a melody or as a bass line. So now we're in the key of A flat, or a modal center, yeah, or 
tonal center A flat. Okay, and now why don't we build the scale by descending? Do, te, la, sol, fi, mi, re, do. And now all the notes together. And we do our scale cluster and we just rest for four seconds. Yeah, in the shape, the sound of the scale. Okay, now we're gonna sing. But we already sang uh, with our uh, SM melody. Now we're gonna sing and play as a bass line. Yeah, same thing. Do, mi, re, fi. And here we go. Why don't you follow me? Do, mi, re, fi, mi, sol, fi, la, sol, te, la, do, te, re, do. And the word right hand, you're playing an A flat triad. Now descend it. Do, mi, te, re, la, do, sol, te, fi, la, mi, sol, re, fi, do, mi, do. And let's do another key. Now, we're going to go to D flat Lydian, and we're going to build them ascending. And so here we go. Do, re, mi, fi, so, la, te, do, and together. We're going to rest, yeah, for a few seconds there. And that's the shape. Yeah, that's the shape of a D flat Lydian flat 7 mode or scale. Okay, so now we're going to go up and down again, but now we're going to change the order of our diatonic triads. Instead of singing Do, Mi, Re, Fi, we're going to flip it. Mi, Do, Fi, Re. Okay, so here we go together. Mi, Do, Fi, Re, Sol, Mi, La, Fi, Te, Sol, Do, La, Re, Te, Do. Now we're going to sing descending. Mi, Do, Re, Te, Do. And let's do one more scale, yeah, for our left hand, left hand, left hand. And let's go to, yeah, let's go to E, Lydian flat sound. Okay, I'm going to leave the video there, yeah, if it gets too difficult, you always can watch it and you can practice along. So now we're going to build our scale descending. Do, te, la, sol, fi, mi, re, do and together. Then we rest. Now we're gonna play a triad with our right hand and left hand. We're gonna play our bass line. But now are gonna be descending diatonic thirds up and down the scale. Okay. So mi do. Okay. Together. Here we go. Mi do. Fi re. Sol, mi, la, fi, le, sol, do, la, re, te, mi, do. Descending. Mi, do, re, te, do, la, te, sol, la, fi, sol, mi, fi. Okay, that's our scale workout. If we could do this with all the modes, all the altered modes, all the symmetrical uh, and the hybrid scales, oh boy, uh, we would be in very, very good shape yeah, for, for everything that we want to do in improvisation or composition or production, you know, from a chord scale point of view. Okay, now... We finished our ear training, we did our scale workout, and what comes next? What comes next is our keyboard harmony, yeah? Keyboard harmony, and here we go.
Okay. Keyword harmony. And the very first thing I want to do is intervals. Yeah, so we have here a minor 13th. Minor 13th. Uh, we're going to play them. For this, I want to, well, right now, just when I explain. But then later, I want to uh, maybe uh, zoom out. Okay, a minor 13th. We're going to see a minor 13th as an octave and four whole steps. One, two, three, four. And a flat or a minor 13 or flat 13, if we're seeing it within the chord, can be an interval. Be in a, how about in a, a dominant 7, flat 9, sharp 9, and a flat 13 on top. Yeah, that, that could be one choice. Yeah. Another choice, uh, yeah, there are so many choices, yeah, that we can have a minor 13 or flat 13. And also, uh, we're going to play them with an octave and four whole steps, or we can expand it, yeah, or even we could expand it even further. Yeah, but just for now, let me zoom back, yeah, we are going to... Um, uh, yeah, we're going to expand <laughs> with whatever I have on this screen. Yeah, and we're going to use the cycle, cycle of fifths. So follow me. C, A flat. That's a minor 13th. Uh, yeah, I'm not going to call the notes. I'm just going to call the minor 13th. You have to figure it out. That's the workout. G, flat 13 or minor 13. D, Flat 13, A, flat 13, E, flat 13, B, flat 13, G flat, minor 13, D flat, minor 13, a flat, flat 13, E flat, flat 13, B flat, flat 13, F, flat 13. King, okay. yeah, so what should we do next? What we should do next is practice our flat, our minor 13s, but descending. And I'm going to change the si a cycle. How about if <coughs> we use this cycle of minor thirds, but emphasizing sharps, yeah, so we can get used to uh, the different enharmonic spelling. Okay, the distance is exactly the same. An octave in one, two, three, four whole steps, yeah. I know if you're in music school, in every music school that I've taught, yeah, or that I know of, yeah, uh, intervals are always seen in relationship to a key center. Yeah, or sometimes in a, in relationship to a scale. Sometimes, if if you are studying chord scale harmony, but we're not studying, we're not seeing intervals this way. Yeah, we're seeing them in a completely different way. We're, we're seeing intervals just as a almost like a space entity, space musical entity. Why? Because then we can use them to build anything we want. Yeah, if we always are seeing an interval. A, in relationship to a key, uh, we cannot see them as little space building blocks. So I can say, okay, hit them. We're in the key of G. We want to play this sharp 9, 3, flat 13, flat 7. And here a flat 9, sharp 11, and a flat, and a root on top. Yeah, and this is a very nice chord. Yeah, and we can do this in all 12 keys. So even when I'm I'm giving my lecture, uh, you know, at the same time, I can visualize in the part, in the back of my mind, all the different um, distances, either going up or going down. Yeah, so that's a skill that little by little we're going to develop. So let's practice our minor 13th descending. And we're going to use the cycle. C. Minor 13th. D sharp. Minor 13th. F sharp, 
minor 13th. A minor 13th. C sharp minor 13th. E minor 13th. G minor 13th. A sharp minor 13th D minor 13th F minor 13th G sharp minor 13th B minor or flat 13th and let's go back to C Okay, I hope that you enjoyed this. Actually, working with intervals is so important. There is something that we have to practice all the time. Okay, so now we're going to take it to another level. Yeah, we're going to work with chord extensions. And the chord extension of the day is a dominant 7, sus 4, 39. So we have a dominant 7, and then we have a 13, and we have a 9. And for this one, I can zoom in a bit more. Let me see. Yeah, that's better. And we're going to use two ways to play those chords in all 12 keys. One is intervals. <clears throat> and that's why we're practicing intervals. And the other one is solfege. Movable though solfege. And those are the two systems that we're practicing all the time. Yeah, intervals, yeah, are going to help us with a visual ability. And movable do solfege is our language. And so we have our uh, visual ability and language, and then together, hopefully, that's going to help us to navigate harmonically and melodically, you know, quite well through all keys. So, why don't we start? Yeah, so we have a sus4 triad. We're going to add a flat 7, dominant 7. Then we're going to add a ninth, and then we're going to add the thirteenth on top. And then we have our solfege syllables. Do, fa, sol, te, re, la. And that's it. Yeah. Let's go to another key. We're going to use the same uh, process. We have root, four, five, flat, seven, nine, thirteen. Now we're going to use solfege. Fa, Sol, Te, Re, La. And also, another aspect which is very important is that we're singing the whole chord. So, we are not just, okay, I'm just learning how to play it and I can kind of play in this key and in the other key. No, we're really learning to hear it. Yeah, we're hearing the Fa, the Sol, the Te, the Re, and La, all the notes. Yeah. Now we're going to go to A. Uh, we have A, we have a 4th, perfect 4th, perfect 5th. We have a flat 7, major 9th, and a major 13th on top. Now we're going to sing. Do, o, fa, sol, te, re, la. And just octave adjust, octave adjust. Yeah, we don't need to torture ourselves. Let's go to D flat. Yeah, I'm also kind of changing keys because if we're using intervals, and we're using solfege, you're going to see that it is so easy to navigate. Yeah, to navigate through all keys. Okay, so we have D flat. Now we have a perfect fourth, perfect fifth. Now we have a flat seven. We have a major ninth and we have a major thirteenth. And now we're going to sing. Do, fa, sol, te, re, la. <coughs> okay, you know. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not a singer, if you can see, but I don't care. I'm, I'm singing all the time. Now, let's go to E. We're going to go to E. We have a perfect fourth, perfect fifth, flat, a dominant seven, major ninth, and a major thirteen. Now we're going to sing. Do, fa, sol, te, re, la. Okay, and one more. We're going to go to F sharp, F sharp. So my, my take is, yes, by using intervals and solfege, we can transpose 
effortless or at least quite effortless yeah <laughs> to all keys it's doable doable okay f sharp we have a perfect fourth perfect fifth a dominant seven a major ninth and a major thirteenth and now we're gonna uh, sing do fa sol te re la okay and that has been our Tutorial on the dominant seven, sus four thirty nine. Yeah, using both solfege and oh intervals and solfege. What are we gonna do next? A, I have a tutorial. I have a tutorial by Sarah Joe that I think is great. Oops, but okay. And I have here my piano, but I don't need to see my piano now. But uh, I'm gonna go back and forth. Yeah, maybe I can take my my head off, my face off Sarah's piano. And what we're gonna do is um, we're gonna practice this blues lick, even if it's a bit difficult. But we're gonna attempt, yeah, to practice this blues lick in all twelve keys. I don't want my okay and okay now I think I'm sort of okay let me see here we go Okay, and now let's just go A. Okay, now I'm gonna br bring my keyboard back. Okay, uh, I don't know if this is gonna work. Yeah, but then we have. So, what can we play with our left hand? What you know me? I'm gonna try something here. Okay, I know I'm covering I'm covering Sarah's Joe uh, keyboard. Yeah, but uh, okay, just for now. Okay, actually this works quite nice. But let me move my keyboard up. Why is not working? Huh. This is a new plugin, and whenever I have something new, I end up not making it work <laughs> the way you should. Okay, I think, okay, I think I got it, I got it, I got it. Okay. And let me see, am I doing this correctly? Yes, yes, I'm doing this correctly. Okay, cool, coolness, coolness. Okay. How about with the left hand? Yeah, we're gonna play uh, this chord. A 3, 13, flat, 7, 9. This is and this is the lick. Okay, I'm cutting, I'm cutting my image here. Okay, perfect, perfect. Now I got it. Okay, actually, actually, I'm better testing this uh, latest version of Ecamm. Yeah, which is a webinar, uh, webinar software that I think is amazing. Yeah, and that's the one that I'm using uh, not only for this webinar, but also for my private lessons and also for all my 
uh, online lessons in, uh, that I teach in Los Angeles College of Music. And it's, it just uh, it allows me to do things online that I could not do on site. I think that's what Sarah Joe played. Yeah. And now we're gonna um, attempt to follow her in all twelve keys. Attempt. So here we go. Okay, I just want to um, digress and just going to say something. Here, actually, Sarah Jo is using open keys in, in open key system. So <clears throat> you are not going into clefs in all different clefs. So, which is actually, remember when, when we do uh, our chromatic scales, yeah, that um, there are two different ways that we approach working in all 12 keys. One is with traditional key signature, and the other one is open keys. Open keys actually seems to be, uh, be becoming more and more popular with the contemporary composers, yeah, because their music is so chromatic. And I think with uh, some educational material like this one, it's perfect. Yeah, so, so <laughs> at least it's easier. Yeah, but, um, okay. Yeah, so it's easier to read, but uh, um, yeah, is uh, so now we're gonna continue. Yeah, let's continue. Okay, and what I'm going to do is, I'm going to leave this video on. Oops. Yeah, I'm going to leave this video on. 
Yeah, because yeah, we need to practice. We need to stop the video and practice, you know. Yeah, and you know, I was talking, oops. Um talking with uh Sarah Joe and sometimes yeah in uh just education we go immediately oh boy i need to practice this in all 12 keys but maybe not yeah maybe we just need to practice in one key or two keys really well Puro. maybe just stay with that one in the key of c you know for and, and play it 20 30 40 times over until it just feels more natural i think you know that's the way i'm gonna approach it myself anyways okay good what should we do next we have 10 more minutes 10 more minutes and let's do okay we're gonna do this salsa pattern let me change my camera here Okay, so we have this Montuno pattern, yeah. And for this one, I even can move my camera a bit. Okay, let me see. Yes, perfect. Okay, so left hand, we have a tumbao. One. We're gonna practice actually this tumbao, is this tumbao and montuno in both two three and three two clave. Yeah, we're gonna do it in both claves. And how do we practice this? You know, uh, I always ask my students to play tap quarter notes with uh, one hand and then do the Montuno with the other hand. One, two, three, and. Okay, now we're gonna play. One, two, three, and. Now we're gonna play with a backup track. Yeah, and let's see how it how it works. One, two, one, two, one, two, three, four. <laughs> Now, we're going to do the same, but in 3-2 clave, okay. When I started uh, my salsa journey, yeah, I was playing with all those different salsa and merengue bands in, in uh, the uh, New England area, yeah. I had a big problem, yeah, switching clavisor, be consistent with one clavisor. It took me a while, yeah, so, but maybe, maybe that helped me. To create this educational material so now we're gonna do the same yeah we're gonna tap with a a pulse you know a quarter notes with our left hand and when we're gonna play with our right hand and one two three and Okay, and now we're gonna add the bass line. One, two, three, and. And 
instrument. Now we're going to play with percussion in three, two, clave. Here we go. One, two, one, two, one, two, three, four. going to go back to two three <clears throat> we're going to take it up a notch well maybe not so much up a notch we're going to go from 148 to 164 164 we're already we're already in a medium medium salsa tempo yeah okay back to three clave 164 beats per minute okay follow me follow me one two one two one, two, three, four. Good, and we're gonna do the same in three, two, clave. We're gonna go to 164 beats per minute, and we're gonna play our three, two, clave pattern. And here we go. One, two, one, two, one, two, three, four. take it up a notch and with that we're gonna conclude let's go back to two three and now we're gonna take it to a hundred and eighty beats per minute okay let's loosen up our wrists let's get ready let's get ready okay if you get tired immediately stop yeah there is no purpose in in uh, <laughs> in torturing ourselves okay <clears throat> but um, uh, let's try just to um, sync yeah to sync with the groove and 180 beats per minute two three clock one two one two one two three four <laughs> Do the same in three to cloud, yeah, hundred 
in 80 beats per minute. Three to clave, and here we go. One, two, one, two, one, two, three, four. <laughs> Okay, good, yeah, I had fun, <laughs> I had fun, uh, so we're going to continue our music lessons next Sunday, I may change it back to Saturdays, I don't know, I don't know, it depends, I have some people, some of my students really love this time, and I have some other students which are complaining, it's Carlos, we want again uh, Saturday mornings, okay, uh, anyways, one way or another, I'm going to leave the video in uh, Facebook and YouTube and hopefully very soon I'll be streaming in different other uh, media simultaneously and until then have a wonderful wonderful week and I'll see you next time so thank you for being with me in this live broadcast we covered a lot of material, and we're going to continue to do so in our next class. I'll see you next week, same time, same channel. Until then, have a wonderful week, practice your instrument every day, and listen, and play lots of good music. See you next week.